Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Zeno. With Justice Zeno. And so you do your intro first for the Justice League. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm he I'm Justice Zeno with the Justice League. We're going to be talking about the biggest words of all, I am, and how it affects the mind. Sure. The, and the body, too. And I'll open it up. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Zeno with 15 minutes fuel. We're just in 15 minutes a day. I'm going to fuel your mind. Your, your body, body and your future. And your future. And today is Sunday. 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 And so we will be talking with Justice. We went out. We've been doing the rules of the mind. They get some karate. Where we're going to talk about the most two powerful words you can put together is I am. I am. It's a self declaration, a self decree. But actually, you know, they say the I am is uh, the almost just think of it as God in action. You know, it's like I am. It's, it's the statement that actually declares your being and who you are. And uh, it's, it's very tough for people to say, I am love, or I am joy, or I am fast. I'm fast. You know, we're just, because it, it's, it's a very, you're, a lot of insecurities get in the way. So, mm. one thing, and actually, you're part of my new keynote. You know that? Did I tell you that? No. So, I talk about you at the end of my talk, where I feel you embrace the I am. So, the I am, to me... Is the hero? Oh, that's awesome. Here, sit over there. Sit next to Justice. Over there. So I, I see the I am as the hero, yes. right? Yeah. It's right. the true, it's the true authentic self you're supposed to be, and so when you Grandma. embrace it, yeah, Grandma's on absolutely. And so the I am is the hero. So when you were in karate, explain this. When you first started at three years old, your ki, you know, the ki, the ki is like the war's cry. Really, the yeah. ki is embodying the I am because when you do the ki, it's supposed to be, full, it just, it almost is like a lion's roar, right? Yeah. So tell me what, what the day when you go over the day that you did your first ki that was like really powerful. Tell me what was going through your mind at that time. Um. Honestly, I don't remember. Um, okay, but, but something it felt, switched. It felt, yeah, it felt um more power and something clicked. Sit back, buddy. Yes, yeah, so something clicked because when when you did your belt test yesterday, your carries were so strong. It was like it was like a lion roaring. It was power, yeah. like superpower. But the, the, it wasn't it wasn't you screaming. It like exhibited confidence, yeah. power, self esteem, self worth, achievement, um, all those things in one. So when was the time? When was the time that uh, you got to that point where you could you felt that you had you embraced the I am or that hero? Um. Probably whenever I was around purple belt. Mm -hmm. Purple belt. And so you said you felt good. So what did it feel like? Because I know a lot of people, you know, when we're raised, we're, we're raised with baby, we're basically conditioned by the imposed, injected values of society to stay mediocre. And we are uh, society. They promote. They educate. They reward and medicate. People just being less than what they could be, but something when it, what made me proud about you or really proud was not your karate achievements. It was that you found your your voice. Yeah. You know what I mean? You found yeah. you, you found something you like to do. Then when you found that I am, then you practiced on your own. You did yeah. everything on your own. Then you started teaching yeah. and helping other kids find uh, their voice. Blue, blue belt. So it was blue belt. Blue, a uh, plain blue. I started teaching. So what what made you feel like you wanted to start teaching? So what something shifted in you. Yeah. Yes. What was it? It was probably like whenever it, like something really powerful happens when you're doing something, that's called true passion right there. So you true felt passion. like you had this true passion or yes. like so that means so what you felt what so you you were at passion what what were you feeling? Was it what you would you say did you find pleasure in it or satisfaction? Uh both. So you found pleasure and satisfaction in what someone else was doing or what you were doing? In what um, I was doing, not in other people. Right, so, and do you know finding pleasure and satisfaction in what you're doing, the term for that, the word is pride. Mm -hmm. So you, you found pride in what you do, you were proud of what you did, right? Yes. And so, well, but did you ever feel that you weren't good enough? Hmm, um... Really, no, because I had the confidence and I practiced the way that I needed to be right. to get to the level. So, okay, good. So, because I want, I'm trying to figure out, like, was there a time where you felt like, when you saw someone do the bow, were you ever like, oh, I don't know if I could ever do that? Um, I saw 
Mr. Austin do the bow, but I really never was like, oh, I'm never going to do that because I just, I just, oh, and Mr. Ollie, and I just embraced it, and then they taught me, and Mr. Prieto, and then I'm really good at the bow. Yeah, so because, I mean, took like five years. It took seven, five six, years, right? So what, 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 so you embraced it, you had, so you had enough self-worth and confidence in you to say, listen, I might not be there now. But, but I'm going to be there. Later. But I'm going to be there. Yeah. And, you, and because I know you would practice for hours, you still do. Because you embrace that, you embrace the confidence to yeah. do it. Is there any times you got frustrated? Oh, a lot, yeah. Yeah. So what um, kept you going? Just the the passion and how it's how it's really good and satis satisfying, satisfying, and how I really liked it and the passion. And I just kept on going. But what kept you on? Because five years is a long time. Like I'd get frustrated on something, so five years kept you because. Well, what was the thing that kept you going for five years to to get to the point you're at? For the bow. For anything, like you're great in the bow, you're great in the forms, you're a champion. Se seven years. That took seven years. The bow took five years. Yeah, but five years is a long time. Yes. So Very out of all the practicing and the frustration, like what what made you say I'm gonna I'm gonna keep on doing it versus saying I'll just switch to something else? Um. Because I really had a passion for the bow. I really liked the bow and I enjoyed the bow and I thought it looked cool. And I had that passion and I wanted to do it and I drive. And when was the day, if you could remember, when you felt yourself, I'm not just practicing this bow anymore, but I got it. I, I am. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's a point where you became not just I'm practicing this thing, like, I got it. Yeah. So when did you feel that confidence where you're like, yeah, I'm ready? And I'm just as good as my teachers. Um, whenever I first competed, whenever, whenever I first did the demo, whenever I first. Got what was the demo? demo? What was the demo? Oh, I don't know. I've done so many demos. Yeah. Um, but one of the really ones where I was like, "Oh yeah, I mastered this," was when uh, the aluminum bow. Yep, I remember that. And you, but before my other one uh, snapped, then you then you got me the the. That carbon fiber one that yeah. was like, what, like six pounds? It was heavy. It was super heavy. And I got really fast at that one. And then whenever I got the well, aluminum what? bow, I was like, So I you practiced it, really so you went through it. So when you got to the point where you say, yeah, this is it, then you went you went to, and, and let everyone know what happened the first time you went to Vegas. Um, It, it was really good. And I won, I won a first place and a second place. And, but... With my bow, I dropped it two times. I dropped it two times doing a move, and then I just picked it up and kept on doing it. But then the next year, I won first. I won two firsts. One of them was bow, by um, a a high score, like a really. Yeah. Oh yeah, you were all score. first. So let's go back to this because I think a lot of times when we tr when we try something or we feel we're good at it, which we are, and it was not you were awesome at it. And the reason why I think you dropped the bow the first time was not was, because you didn't practice. You you went for it. You 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 got you did risk. He did. You took a lot of risk. So you did. You were doing some risky moves, and it dropped. Like when you threw it in the air to catch it, right? No, so that was that was the second year. I caught it the second year. Well, I, I know you, but the an, first I did year an angle one. Yeah. I did an angle wrist roll. Yeah, but the wrist. first year, the first year you did and you dropped it, but you picked it up and you finished. Yes. But the thing is, when you drop it, they disqualify you just for that. So no, they lower your they lower your score to um a um. A seven, yeah, point oh, but I think the judges, yeah, it was a seven point oh. I mean, the I saw the look in the judges' face. They were so they were so saddened because they were like, "This kid killed it," but like, yeah. but yeah, but here's the thing: you finished. Yeah. Now the whole next year, because he only gets to compete once a year in Vegas. The whole next year, did you ever worry about like so so? Did you ever have a fear of dropping it again or? Or did that did it hold you back, or what was your mindset on I, that? Um, I just thought I dropped it again, and I and I know like how to do it, and I completely didn't think about dropping it at all because I I just kept on doing it and didn't worry about dropping it. No. Okay, because a lot of times in life, right, when we we anchor something to the past. Let's say I I did something, and you know. The circumstances didn't go the way or the outcome wasn't the way I wanted. And sometimes people just quit. 
right? They're like, oh, I drop, like they drop the ball in life, so to speak. They drop the bow in life and they quit and they never get a chance because they think, well, it just didn't work for me. But in reality, it did. But the whole problem is, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, the whole, the whole reality is that, you know, that, that didn't mean that you were a failure. Like you didn't, you didn't base your identity on that, that bow dropping. You knew you yeah. were good. You knew you were great. And then you came back and you killed it the next year. And you did yeah. even crazier stuff. Yeah, a lot crazier. And then this year I'm going to do even crazier stuff. So. But the thing is, I appreciate that you take the risk because, you know, when, when you take the risk, yeah, there's more risk, but there's a whole lot more reward. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Because you could have just done the basic form. That was simple. You don't. You didn't do any tricks with it. But the fact that you take the risk, and I like what Mr. Prater said. He's like, let them take the risk and let them have fun because that, that's what yeah. you want to do. Because yeah, sure. the thing, if you if you won and it was less than the potential or less than your best. You feel like, well, yeah, you, you, you don't you, feel like you, you, when you don't do your best, you, you feel like, a second placer, but when you do your best, you feel like a first. So even if you did your best and you didn't get the number one place, at least you felt you did your best. Yeah. But if you did less than your best and you got first, it wouldn't be as good. No. I, I agree. Well, that's good stuff right there. So uh, any closing thoughts you want to do on uh, the I am? Because you embrace the I am. You embrace yeah. the inner hero. Uh, you got the, 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 the roar of the lion, um, all the other, the eye of the tiger. You know, I have, a, I have that one picture of you with your, with your, uh, your focused eyes. Hmm. That was sweet. You, oh, did, yeah. you, did, you did your pre-bell test. You crushed that for an hour, for oh. two hours straight. Yeah, I was, and you know what I was saying in between the performance because I closed my eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I said? What? I am, I am fast, I am, and I said all that. And Say that again. Say that again slowly so everybody can hear what it is loud. So in between my forms, and I'm, and I'm not making this up because I was closing my eyes. Yeah, I saw I it. My, because like, yep, and I said, I am fast, I am strong. And then I said, I have a lot of stamina, and I have, like, a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of stamina, and I just powered through it. So that's cool. So, because he would do, I would notice him, he had to do seven forms in a row, and then I would notice, you would, you would bow, you'd close your eyes and take your time, and so when you close your eyes, you were repeating the I am. Yes, for all seven. So that's anchor right there. So yes. you were literally, like, you, you were tapping into your hero power, and then you killed it. Yeah. And I appreciate it. I'm like, what is he thinking about? Like, I was like, maybe he's taking his time. I knew you were, fo I thought it was focused, but you weren't just focusing. You were affirming in the moment, in the test, in the war. Yeah, because the test was, it was exhausting, but whenever it got to the uh, forms part after that, it was much easier, but, but the forms, it's a major part. That's the major part. Yeah, so it was just like you were, you were reminding yourself who you were. Yes. I love it. And I think a lot of times in life, Due to society and circumstances, we forget who we really are, and yeah. we let we let society dictate who they who we think we should be, or we want to be, but it's not who we were created to be. And so, the time that you took that that moment to close your eyes and refocus on who you were, I think yeah. I think that's that's where that power. And if you, if I just if people could just get that, you're 10 years old, but imagine how we put that into any other thing you do in your life, and you keep those those habits and that that combination, so to speak, of, of, of powerful thinking, you could do anything. Yeah. Cool. Anything yeah. you want to close with? Um, yeah. Definitely check out my uh, Facebook page if you have not already. And keep on saying I am. And never say the bad things and never get up, give up on that. And then following along with that, you need to help the idea that's been plan planted in your brain. With the help? The yeah, idea. help the idea and make it come true. So when you have this idea, you, you help to. it. And so what do you mean by help it? That's a good that's a good term. So um, I have an idea, a positive to, one, you right? To, you have you have it in your brain, it's drilled in, and okay. and you have to help then you have to do it with your body. Like let's say I'm I am really, really good at the bow. You can't just pick up a bow and do that. So you have to practice. And then that's the that's the idea, and then you practice it, and then you have the idea fulfilled. Nice. So you're saying, so I have this idea, this goal, but the goal and the dream is not good enough. Then you practice and put in the work yes. to make that idea concrete reality. Yeah. Douche. That's great. That's awesome. All right, I'm doing okay. it. 
All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching 15 Minute Fuel Sunday, Sunday. So if, just saying, so if Justice is 10 years old, and we don't prep this stuff. This is all right off the bat. So if he's saying this at 10, I could tell you that I'll actually be going to him for wisdom, insight, and understanding by the time you're 15. I'll be asking you the questions. Yeah. I mean, like, I'll be getting advice from you. I'll be asking you questions because yeah. you think pure. I love it. it. just And what I love about Justice, you notice that he tries to put in a terminology because, and it's tough for him to, to think of the words because he's actually going by a feel, an intuition. That's beautiful because he's like, well, you know, that you could see how he's trying to take the feeling and make it into words to explain to us. Yeah. But the fact that you're in tune and you go by this feel or this knowing, that's something I think that's, that's part of the secret. That, that what happens as adults, we lose that because we start, we get forced into a secret identity and the secret identity blinds us from feeling that. So yeah. I just appreciate you're your in hero mode. And that's what we want for everybody else. So God bless everybody. We appreciate you. Uh, any comments or questions, just put it on there. Justice and I will answer those, of course. Yes. Have an amazing Sunday. Enjoy it. And thank you for watching Sunday Sunday. And Justice, close yours off. Thank you for watching Sunday Sunday. And see Justice you next Lee. time. Justice yeah, Lee. so uh, make time. sure you go and like Justice Zeno on YouTube and fan page on Facebook. Yeah. Make sure you go to the Dr. Zeno page if you're watching this to so get all the updates. And We Are Heroes, episode 16 is coming out tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. It's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a very emotional one. A very emotional one. Uh, what team is it? I was I was speaking to a couple students, and we had a really big breakthrough with one of the students. Like. Like a good one. Like mind shift. Like, like here went went from went into full hero mode. Okay. It was wonderful, and we have some from we have Bruce in there too. Oh, nice. Bruce. All right, guys. God bless. You hit finish. I'll hit finish. We'll see, see you later. later.